favorite artist. This time it's Jacob Lawrence. And we're going to talk about his work and who he was. But I think um, we want to get pretty much into this as quickly as possible because I got a lot of stuff I want to get done in today's episode. So let's look. Here is the painting that we're going to make. It's called Strike from 1949. One of his great, I think it's one of his great paintings. He's made lots and lots of fantastic paintings, but we'll look at those here in a second. You'll see that there's a link to a Dropbox. I also earlier today put some gesso on this, some white gesso. And now that's, I'm just sanding a little bit of the extra texture or tooth that's on there. Huh. I see there's some issues with the internet freezing again. I'm not sure what's happening. Um, my apologies for, for that if it's stuttering for with you or for you. So here I'm going to use some carbon paper to transfer this image, the one I printed, it's on the Dropbox. I'm going to print it out and I'm going to put some carbon paper between that and the canvas and then do a tracing of it. So let's get some tape. This one's a little bit, there's more detail in the drawing here, so I really want to make sure it's taped down so that it doesn't do too much moving. I'm not too concerned with the top row here. You could also tape it to the, on the side if you wanted. I just, this is my, tends to be where I, I put things anyway, so I'll just put it here. So I'm, I've used this graphite paper a few times. I'm just debating to myself, can I get away with one more? I think I can. So I'm just looking for where the most detail up here. I haven't really, it's not too much graphite been rubbed off, so. Okay, so I'm gonna trace this onto the board. Grab a pencil. I like to use red or blue. Okay. Looks, I get, I'm seeing face, or YouTube is saying that the internet is, is running fine right now. So we shall see. Um, okay. So I'm gonna start, I'm gonna just transfer all of this stuff down here. And then depending on how we're doing for time, um, I will draw the, or trace the images in the background. So let's just, we'll see how things go here. Okay. I know I could do this before class, but I really wanted these episodes to be um, doing it in real time. So you see me painting and drawing and breaking pencils in real time and it gives you an idea of really how long it should take to get this painting done from beginning to end and also just like you saw at the very very beginning of today's episode there was a time lapse of the creation of the master study painting and eventually I'm going to do that same thing with every single painting we've made so I don't want to cut out any of this stuff it's important that it's all part of the, the recording so I know some people may do this ahead of time and if you do that, then you could show up a little bit late <laughs> and catch us where we are. So, this is, 
I would say this one's maybe one of the more complex Jacob Lawrence paintings that, um, that we could do, just in terms of the amount of detail. There's, he has a very, um, uh, he was a very prolific artist who made a lot of artwork over the course of his life. And especially when he was young, he, he started off young and kind of came out of the gates on fire. He produced some of his really important work in his early 20s, which um, even today is kind of rare. Throughout most of art history, most artists didn't really achieve worldwide renown or celebrity recognition, critical recognition, until they were you know, in their 50s, 60s even. So uh, I think it's kind of remarkable that he was so successful so early, especially given the fact that he was an African-American artist who achieved this success um, during kind of the 1940s, 19, late 1930s, which is, you know, was uh, a period of where African Americans and minorities of all kinds in uh, around the world, not just the United States, um, faced a lot of racism and structural racism where uh, so I think it's both a testament to the quality of his work and to um, uh, but but I think also you know a testament to the, the culture the african-american culture that he grew up in was primarily the people that supported him right so they, uh, they really fostered him and, and lifted him up and celebrated him um, when maybe some other white-owned institutions weren't, uh, didn't really go out of their way until there was kind of no ignoring his ability, his talent. Which I think is one of the reasons why I liked this uh, this painting, Strike. You know, um, Jackie Robinson being the uh, among the first to break the color barrier. And there were other um, baseball players who sort of broke through, but he was the one who kind of really broke through and really stayed at the major league level. Fun little tidbit about Jackie Robinson as a total detour. Jackie Robinson made his professional baseball debut not in Brooklyn for the Dodgers, who later moved to Los Angeles, but to Montreal in the Montreal Royals. So kudos to them for giving him a chance. I mean, <sighs> yeah, he, he was an incredible player who changed the game. So it's not like it, it was a it was kind of a bit of a no brainer. But considering the period of time, I guess it was taking a chance, right? Okay. We'll see when I. When I pull off the carbon paper from here, it's going to be a little bit sloppy. I'm, I'm both moving kind of fast, but I'm also not too concerned about doing this exactly, exactly like my tracing here. I just use this just to kind of jumpstart the, the process. Like imagine if we were sitting here trying to 
draw all this out step by step, you'd be like, wow, there's a lot of detail. And all right, so we're getting pretty good there. You can see some of the pencil crayon has rubbed off onto the side there. I'm not worried about that at all because we will we'll put. Uh, It seems to be working right now. So I'm sorry for people experiencing some troubles there. <laughs> I see. <laughs> Donna traced the whole image and then realized there wasn't any graphite paper underneath. I have done that. So that's why I can laugh. <laughs> I haven't done it on uh, in one of these episodes, but... I have used uh, graphite paper and carbon paper many, many times throughout my career, and I, I, I've probably done that, forgetting to put the paper, graphite paper, in there probably a dozen times. So you're in good company, Donna. Assuming I'm good company. <laughs> it's uh, it's a workplace hazard so I'm not sure if, yeah let's just keep on going here some of these little faces in the background may I'm not sure if there is graphite paper under some of this up here but I mean these are just the people in the crowd and not that they're not significant. If they weren't significant, I don't think he would have bothered to paint them, obviously. But for our purpose, if you want to omit them or simplify them even more, especially considering the time constraints, then I don't, uh, that would be totally acceptable. Okay, I got it all there. Ta-da! Okay, so once that's there, we'll just peel off. <laughs> Thank you, Donna. Just um, see if we can get a little bit of um, this red off here. Not that I'm super concerned about it, but it's always easier if you can remove something without having to paint over it. Then you don't have to paint over it. <laughs> so, there we go. Um, just maybe one thing I'll just point out in case we can put this back into the painting later, but you'll see on the side edge here, there was, there's another player in, um, Jacob Lawrence's original version of the painting or his painting really. Um, and I've just decided to kind of omit it just because there was already a lot going on. You'll see there's details in the crowd that I obviously haven't put down. There's the, the, um, the fence or the, the, the curtain, the mesh that would be in behind that I also haven't drawn because that would be something we can do in one of our very, very final steps. Okay, so how do we get this image right there onto here? We've got the drawing, that's a big step. But what color are we gonna put down here? Well, I am gonna probably put down a color that is similar to what we have down here in the ground 
right? This color, kind of a yellow, brown, orangey kind of color, uh, like a very earthy orange, very earthy brown, like light brown. So, um, and then even, I'm going to do the whole canvas, including the, the figure, the baseball player, because if we just zoom in really quickly, you can see that he's applied some white over top of it. But he, he's very clearly also done it in a way that, you know, we can see these brush strokes. Now, it's not the best photo we're working from here, but you can see it's not a big, solid white, that there is some of the previous layer still showing through there. So I'm going to make sure that we get a little bit of that in this painting. So next step is, let's move this out of the way. And we're going to put some color down here. And so let's get the paints out of the box. I got my brushes. I'm very fortunate that I have a studio space where I can leave all of my art supplies out overnight or for weeks on end without worrying about having to move things. But I know that I'm probably in the minority. Probably most of you have are painting at your kitchen tables and that kind of stuff. Um, so I'm going to use, I th uh, let me see, I might use some glaze. But I'm also going to use some slow dry medium, right? And so I'll take the glaze out. So and let's let's close this. Up. So I'm going to use the slow dry medium. This is the same thing, the golden brand that they've called the retarder, and it's almost out. So um, I can retire this bottle shortly. In fact, one of the things that I, I might do. Let's see how much is. We'll just marry these bottles. Let's see if I can we'll just let that sit there and drip for a short while, right? Do I just see that on camera? So I just letting everything kind of pour in. I should have done that earlier, but didn't even think about it until just now. So we'll put our colors onto the painting here. starting to run low. A, a lot of people said they ran out of their yellow and had to replace at least the warm yellow. <laughs> right, I know I'm going to use a lot of that shortly, so... Um, that's why I put that much on there. With the other colors, less so at least just off the top of my head. So I'm not going to put too much of those colors on until I need them. I'm not the biggest fan. I mean, I, I like this paint a lot. I think this paint is probably amongst the best, least expensive paints that you can buy. But they're caps. I always find you get all these, like, kombucha skins or something on there. Oh, see, I put the cool red in the wrong place. So we'll just move this around here. It's not ideal, but uh, okay, and we will use some white, but not just yet. So, if we want to get that um, this color that's down here, it's basically like this warm yellow, maybe with a little bit of the warm red, and maybe a little tiny bit of warm blue to give it just a bit more of a brown quality. So, grab a brush, and I'm going to get just a bit of red on my brush here. And then let's rub it in here. In fact, I'll just use much of the 
gets you yellow. Blend it all together. And again, I'm just gonna use a tiny tad, like, well, that's even might be a little bit much, so wipe that off. So you can see how that blue just took a bit of the, the brightness off of that orange. It took it from being kind of a fire engine orange to a little bit more of a brown, earthy orange. Okay, next I'm just going to add some water to this. A few weeks ago I was trying to do this with like an eyedropper and it just shows you could see pretty how precisely I'm doing it, but essentially I just want it to be, I'm going to try to spread this over the entire canvas, so I want it to be thin enough to cover the whole thing. I also want it to be thin enough that it's not going to obscure any of the image below. And uh, Which you run the risk of if you put white in here. And remember, this is a white canvas, so it's almost like having white paint to work from. Uh, Gail says, yeah, like ochre, yellow ochre. Okay. So once I get enough on here, I just like to try to spread it around. I don't want to work overwork this, because I'm afraid I might start to kind of blend the image, the pencil drawing, away. So I just want to kind of get it even enough. Now you can see there is some brush strokes that have stayed here. Now, potentially if you want, you could try to kind of integrate those strokes into kind of the action a little bit so you know I might kind of draw them a little bit so they're kind of pointing towards the center where or at least you know we've got this uh, the baseball it's it's called strike right so we have this player who's trying to hit that ball but you can see he's missed it here's his bat and the ball is is landing in the catcher's mitt there. So that's where kind of at least part of our attention might be drawn towards that that area of the painting. I don't mind those and you can see pretty much for every painting we've done the the background usually gets covered up pretty good but you know in Jacob Lawrence's version there is some of it that remains kind of visible, which we may do a little bit leave as well. So if that's the case, just want to be mindful of if it is visible, that it's still it's reinforcing the structure of the painting. OK, so I got the color pretty darn close. Pretty happy with that. Just going to make sure I've got I like the sides of my painting to be painted as well, so there's no white on there. And then it's also really important that you uh, <laughs> put your palette right onto the top of your painting, just like I did there. That really is a very important step. Make sure you do that. <laughs> okay. So, um, I got a rag ready to go. I wipe off that paint first, and then I put it in my water to soak for just a couple of minutes. 
Oh, I'm, and I'm wiping my hands off onto my new painting pants. Or they're old pants, but I'm officially retiring my old painting pants today. It was about time to, to move on from those. So it's always kind of satisfying. I, now I've officially got another pair of painting pants because I just wipe stuff all over them deliberately, which is not always the case. <laughs> okay, maybe while this is drying, and we'll see how it, it should dry pretty quickly, why don't we take a, just a quick little uh, visit on Jacob Lawrence's art here and who he was as a person. Uh, he was born 1917 and died in 2000. And when I was putting this class together, I didn't realize that he lived until that that long. That he was 82 years old when he died. There's a lot of great videos about him that are that exist out there. There's interviews with him, and he, I was like watching these videos, thinking he would be just like the coolest guy to go and have a cup of coffee with. He's so, like, calm and soft-spoken, like a real, like, you know, if you think about his work, which we'll check out here soon, you would, might assume that he was, like, a, like a, maybe even potentially an angry guy. And it's interesting, one of the interviews talks about how he was called, President uh, Jimmy Carter called him and asked him to participate in, a, in an art exhibition called Protest. And he turned the president down. The president of the United States, he turned him down because he was like, I, I'm just not, I, I don't, I'm not into the idea of protest and, and putting this kind of negative uh, energy out there. Um, and it was, and he just, and it, I, I'm really, really paraphrasing like a 20 minute long video, but I just thought that was like really kind of surprising that uh, his, because you'll see some of his work really dives into um, some like deep themes that run through African-American culture, like slavery and um, police brutality, and, um, et cetera. So let me see, what do I want to mention about him? Born in New Jersey, grew up in Harlem, New York City. Um, he had uh, the, like um, um, great teachers he, and he there was um I wonder if I can I don't know if it's in here I haven't actually read the this document so I'm not sure where everything is but he there was a uh, like a library in Harlem that he went to that had a kind of a great collection it was I think it was a private library that was created by a local prominent citizen that had like a really good collection of African-American history and so he immersed himself when he again when he was young like 18 19 he really immersed himself in the history of african-american experience um, and used that as the source of a lot of his work going forward um, let me see oh, that's interesting he got a guggenheim fellowship 1945 i didn't even realize that huh and joseph albers Oh, so all this stuff, Black Mountain College is was a like really important art school uh, in the history of the United States. I didn't realize that he also taught there. Um, Jacob Lawrence was a very prominent art teacher as well and taught for like 15, 16 years at I think uh, George Washington University. Is that, maybe I should get that right. It's in the beginning of here. University of Washington, sorry, not George Washington, but University of Washington in Seattle, right? So he, he spent most of his life, early life, up until I think the mid, early 70s in New York, and then moved to Washington to and uh, taught there, and I would say arguably is the most well-known, famous, most, whose art sells the most, etc., however you want to break it down all of the above of Seattle, right? He, he would probably be probably the most prominent Seattle artist I can think of off the top of my head. And being filming here in Vancouver, Seattle is just an hour and a half or so drive down the road. And, um, you know, I would say of the two most 
the, the two artists that are probably the most prominent artists for the whole Pacific Northwest would be Emily Carr here in Canada and Jacob Lawrence in the United States. And it is worth kind of noting that though that the that the two most prominent artists in this entire region happen to be a woman and an African-American man, right? Which, considering there's probably not many other places I can think of, in, uh, at least in North America, where that is the case. Anyway, long detour. Let's take a look at his art. Uh, you know, he called himself a dynamic cubist, or he's, he's called his style dynamic cubism. And uh, so we could see some of the, 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 the look of what is called synthetic cubism and not analytical cubism, which is a whole long story. But um, so he's got this kind of angular, uh, kind of very graphic approach. And again, I've mentioned before graphic, not in terms of violence, but in terms of like, like graphic design, like very uh, drawing oriented imagery and compositions, very striking uh, colors, right? So you have like yellow next to blue, next to red. So very little kind of blending of colors, unlike Vermeer and Leonardo da Vinci and other artists um, uh, in the classical period. So very bright colors, but also using, um, you know, black and brown as probably the two primary colors of his paintings. And black and brown were also very much major colors in Cubism. So if you look at like the early Cubist paintings by Picasso, uh, Juan Gris, um, uh, Brock, etc., they mostly focused on browns and black um, because they really saw themselves as doing kind of like actual research and they wanted to kind of limit the variables involved in that kind of research and color was just too much so kind of you know so you, so that was a feature of cubisms which he adopted that style and then made it his own but obviously being an african-american artist i think he also s saw the potential for you know using a black and brown palette uh, to illustrate his neighborhood and the people that lived in it and african-american culture um, Donna says there was still some fabric on the old ones in the chat. I'm not sure there was fabric on the old ones. What does that mean? Um, you know, looking at, at these images, like I, I watched probably two or three, three hours of documentaries last night on his work. And some of these, some of these paintings I'm just zipping through, you know, if you haven't really kind of seen them and really examined them, don't really have the weight that they do. Like, there was a whole set of interviews with about uh, Jacob Lawrence and his relationship to uh, Native American or Aboriginal Indigenous people and the paintings he made about that. He made this whole series called Struggle, of which, um, again, Native Americans as... as the, the term is used in the United States um, feature quite prominently in that series and um, so he really took that as an opportunity to really go wild with some color and these really kind of interesting color contrasts in here um, so I would I, I would highly encourage you if you're interested in this painting and this artist is to really dive into uh, the uh, watching a few videos on Jacob Lawrence PBS put out a whole bunch of, of really great videos okay I think this is this almost dry I'm gonna hit it with some air and then we'll move forward here
there's one painting of his. I'm not sure if I can find it. This one. I was. I almost like pulled a, a switch here and decided to make this painting instead today. You know, like that would be kind of wild. But I love this. This. I may even in the future do this painting again or separately because I just love this painting. Um, anyway, <laughs> so if you're if you're if you don't want to do this painting, there's lots of other great Jacob Lawrence paintings out there. So let's uh, examine this and think about what next colors we want to add here. Let's see how much we can get done. I think. Ideally, when you're making a painting, you generally want to work from kind of forward to back. And, and I mean that not just in terms of, let's say, the people here in the background and doing those, but also any underlying layers. And you'd probably want to leave something like this figure, the baseball player, towards the very end. Um, but in terms of, like, let's say if we want to try to finish this in about the next two hours or less, we're going to be kind of moving around the picture a little bit. So, and I also try to kind of work, if I'm going to be putting a color in, I try to start top left and then move down this way so I'm not getting my sleeve or my hand too much into the rest, of, into the wet paint. But, I think... Despite what I've just said, I think I will start with some white in here. Um, just to start to kind of build up this surface. And uh, yeah, okay, so let's get some white onto our paint. And I'm gonna grab a brush, which one should we use? I per if when I'm painting my own paintings, I generally paint with paintbrushes like this, these flat brushes, as opposed to round brushes. That's just my own personal preference, but um, so that that's why you might see me using those brushes a lot. Like if I was if if if, if I could only live have one or two brushes uh, that I would ever use. It might be a kind of combination of, let's say something like that. Right, these uh, square brushes of different sizes and then like a very small, like this is painted over the size one here. Uh, what is this, oh, three tenths? Is that what that says? Anyway. So let's, what color? Let's go for, let's, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna use the white and I'm gonna dilute it a little bit with some water, potentially. Let me just think as I just get, start getting paint on my brush. Because if I paint white directly on here, it's just going to go totally white. And I'm not going to be able to see any of this orange. So I kind of want a little bit of that. I could glaze with it. I could also put a lot of the slow dry medium in there. Let's get the rest of this onto... That bottle's finally done. Now we can use this one. So actually, I'm gonna put a, a lot of slow dry medium with my white here. More than I usually do. And this way I'm gonna be able to not only get a little bit more transparency, probably not too much, but I'll also be able to do a bit of blending with it as well. So. And again, you know, with these classes, I'm not, my goal is not to completely faithfully reproduce everything that we see. 
that just to do an approximation of the painting, I think. So I got some white on my brush here. Um, I'm going to go, let's just wipe off a little bit of this paint onto a slightly smaller one. And then wipe that off. And into the bucket it goes. And work this over here. Okay, so how about let's brush I'm putting it on and then I'm trying to kind of scrub a little bit off gently to get a little bit of the texture or the color underneath there on the painting or from below back in here. Now, this leg is crossing over the other one, so I'm just gonna take my paint and kind of bring it back up there so that this leg still appears to be on that other one, in front of the other one, if that makes any sense. just thinking do I want to do blending on here I think I'll do that afterwards I'm gonna lay in a bunch of the white and we'll do this uh, that kind of blue as a separate layer So we'll just put a, a lot of white wherever it needs to go. I'm just going to carry those lines right off the edge of the page there. It's interesting I, I don't know if you're supposed to be like you could see in his painting the edge of the batter's box is usually actually a box in baseball but he has it doesn't carry all the way through I don't know why so I'm tempted to, to put white lines on the side here but I, um, I don't know I gotta think about it I, I could also see somebody saying well and the 40s, the batter's box 
It was just an L shape and not an actual box, so... You know baseball fans are purists for when it comes to their history. Boy, oh boy, if I got the batter's box wrong, I'd never hear the end of it. Okay. I'm just going to, even though, again, his painting, this kind of ends just for the sake of it. I'm going to carry it out the side of the picture. Hmm. I think I am gonna. So, you can see these lines are kind of point drawing us into the painting, right? And if you remember our perspective drawing classes, if you took that, right, these are kind of leading up towards like. I guess they're kind of a little bit higher if we take these lines, converge somewhere up here. So that would mean this one also is kind of going right around there so even though it's not in his painting I'm just gonna add it there and you can address all of the uh, uh, Ace says how c how do I find the Dropbox I can I pr I can pre-draw the figure next time the Dropbox, the link to that is in the video description below in the video. So um, just scroll down. I think it says like there's the Facebook group and uh, links to that. If you look at any of the other Master Study episodes, that's you'll also get the link is the same for all of those videos. It's a different Dropbox though for the paint the news and our painting class th that we did uh, September to s January though um, I'm also gonna paint the baseball I would in the middle of the night last night I was thinking to myself I'm gonna make this baseball much bigger and then because it, maybe it's it's hard to see. I was just laying in bed thinking that. And then I was thinking, you know what? There's kind of a, the genius of this small ball is that when we see it, it, it forces us to kind of go into the painting or the painting to kind of zoom up towards us because we're kind of, we, it's right in the middle and our attention kind of enlarges it. Anyway, those are the things I think about when I can't sleep. Um, so I'm going to go with a smaller brush to get I know some other people would do would actually paint these colors in directly but I'm just going to paint the white over top right now and I think it'll be it'll make my life a little bit easier. I'm thinking, I'm hoping, anyway. I see. Um, Donna's talking about my painting pants. Still have a bit of. It, it is. It is hard to move on from from painting clothes when there's still places that could uh, get more paint on them. But all things must come to an end at some point, right? Okay. Now, there is more little details around the painting. 
Um, obviously in the crowd. I think I will tackle that next. Okay. So the colors, if I, so right now I've got this kind of very bright white. I mean, it's just white right out of the tube. I have diluted it a little bit, but it's, um, uh, it's, it's the white coming out of the tube. Now, if I go into the background and I paint a little bit of that, I'm going to want to make it a little bit more of a gray so that it, it doesn't compete with the white in the foreground, it, it will push it back and make it recede. It makes it look like there's atmosphere in between these layers. Um, so, hmm. I think I'm going to do that. Let's do that right now, I think. Or do I want to put the blue on here? I think I'll, I'll let this dry and then let's mix a gray. Okay, so it means I'm going to need a little bit of black. And let's just put that black to the side. Barely need any black. We've talked about this kind of stuff before, but um, like if we take that black and put it in here, boom, we've got, there was barely any black on my brush and now we've got a, a gray. So for the background, this will, it would be like the brightest color in the background, right? So even if there was a bright highlight in the background, I would keep it gray so that it's not competing with anything in the foreground. So, and you can see as this starting to dry, it's lightening back up again. If I wanted, I could do another layer over it. We'll see how things go. But I'm, this might be good enough, so anyway. Let's get some of this gray on our brush. Um, I'm, I'm going to blow dry that just so I don't get my hand on the... You know, I, again, I could imagine some people saying, why would you bother putting the slow dry medium into the white? You're not mixing any colors and you're just, and now you're blow drying it to make it speed up. The reason why I put the slow dry medium in there is I wanted more transparency in my brush strokes, right? And the slow dry medium, it's clear. And I basically did two to one. So now I had, I basically halved the amount of pigment in here. So it's way more transparent. I could have used water, but the one thing I always worried about, I'm always worried about when I use water in my paint, um, I don't mind it in the, you can see I used it in the, in the first layer, so I don't mind that at all as a wash, but when I start painting wet paint over with water in it over top of other things, the potential for me to scrub that, pr any previous layers off is quite high. 
a lot of painters you start very thin and slowly you start building up and getting thicker and thicker to help prevent to and it's, it's a little more stable of a kind of a surface too anyway um let's apply this gray in here this is still a little bit tacky but i think it's going to be dry enough to for us to paint over now let's zoom into it. I'm going to just get some of the white in the background here. So let's try to locate where we are here. So here's, this is a leg of a hawker in the stands. The hawker being the, the man or the woman that is selling peanuts and popcorn. A job I used to have for I mean, probably, what was it, two years I did that at the baseball stadium in Calgary where I grew up, worked for the Calgary Cannons. Boy, oh boy, that was the worst, I would say probably the worst job I've ever had. Oh, I don't know how thing, things are now with, with jobs like, with that kind of a job. Well, obviously no one's doing it right now. You can't even have fans in the stadium. But uh, the way that 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 team paid the paid you was you didn't actually get a, a paycheck. You you may you worked entirely for tips, and and also and uh, on the um, uh, like a percentage of sales, and you had to buy the the pop or soda so, and you we they would pour it from you know like a one of those dispensers you know like you know it was like a soda fountain right so they, they'd pour it and you're walking up and down the stands and if you didn't sell it within a certain amount of time then obviously no one wants to buy buy your pop when all of the ice cubes have melted you lost money <laughs> And so there, the first maybe week that I was working that job, I would work for, you know, like four or five hours and then I'd come home. And I actually lost money. I actually went to work for four or five hours and ended up owing them like 30 bucks, which is like probably the most demoralizing, you know, like, and it's, in, I guess, intended to kind of motivate you to sell more or something, but... And there were some people that would make good money doing that, and they were loud and boisterous. And <sighs> that was just not, right? just put okay so what else can we do while we're right here we're kind of blocking in the big shapes um, I think the next thing I might do is go to this dark dark blue um, in, for the back in behind here and maybe I can do the shoes and all that kind of stuff here. Typically, I, I use do that kind of thing near the very, very end. But since there's a lot of it in here, and you know, the way that I'm paint, it's always a bit struggle for me as an artist, but also as a teacher, as to like do how like in the order of what I want because. I don't necessarily paint in the order that I teach people to paint. Um, because, you know, I've got 20 years of, of experience and I have a little bit, I have an understanding of where things, you know, I can, I can kind of remember where things are. So I don't really mind if I paint stuff out, but I know that, you know, for people that are beginning or intermediate artists, if I was to paint that way, I know I could lose people pretty quickly. So I'm always sort of conscious in my mind of like, okay. We, especially some of these, the the drawing in the background, we don't want to totally obscure that stuff because it might people could get lost. So, um, 
That's why I'm often talking to myself of like this stuff yeah i see deborah saying it's freezing i do see youtube is is giving me warnings again you it might I, i'm not sure if this would help but if you just sort of pause the video and just let it get like a minute ahead i wonder if the feed is better that way as i said Usually when I watch the video later on and I'm looking for all the, the problems, I don't see as many of them, you know, the the video lagging or whatever, or freezing. So I think it's just like a real time thing, but I could be wrong. Uh, this is at least the sound of right. I did put a new battery in the microphone. Maybe that's helping. Okay, we could, let's um, let's mix this back around here. Lolly gagging around, Michael. So, to make that dark color, I could mix a really really dark brown. I think I'm just going to go a little bit the faster route and use this dark blue, this warm blue, and a little bit of black. And once again, I, I like the uh, having a little bit of color in the, the shadows and also in the highlights. So we're not just like one or the other. I am tempted in this area to just paint over every all these bats and things and then to, to put paint over top of them just so I don't have to outline everything but because painting around things is time-consuming right as I'm sure all of you know so the less outline I have to do the faster the painting will go but there's, at some point, they all get to about the same place, and you might save yourself 10 minutes. I don't know, it's like, ah, was it worth it? Like, again, if I was painting this on my own, I might just paint that out. But I know that some other people are like, well, now I don't know where to put the baseball bats and the things that are laying against this fence. Like, oh, like. So. And at this stage too, don't worry about making this perfect and getting this line to line up and all that kind of stuff. That is all stuff that we do at the very, very end of the painting. So this part can be pretty sloppy. We're just trying to get the paint into place, block out all these big shapes. I could see myself after this is done even painting these baseball bats white so that I can paint other colors on top of them but we'll see kind of like what we did with the volcano painting if you were if you did that with me just a few days on Thursday okay I guess there's this mitt on the ground. We can just do that really quickly.
And I, again, I'm not going to paint any the webbing or anything like that right now. I'm just going to keep on moving forward. Let's get. In fact, I'm going to put a little bit of the slow dry medium in this color, this black that I'm using here. Because I think black tends, for me anyway, tends to be one of those colors that, that either dries faster or often when I'm using it, I'm using it fairly thin. So, and the thinner the paint, then the easier it is for that the water to evaporate out of it. So I find it tends to get a little bit stickier quicker. So I'm going to paint the, the umpire's jacket maybe a little bit lighter color so it just sticks out a little bit more from where it currently is. What I love about um, Jacob Lawrence's artwork is it uses a lot of flat colors. I know it doesn't really look like it in this painting, but a lot of his paintings feature, like the, you could almost imagine them being cut out with paper and glued onto the canvas. Like there's like, it, almost like puzzle pieces kind of thing, right? And um, which is, yeah, you know, I guess something that that is in some cubist paintings. There's lots of different. There's a there's two major kinds of cubism, as I mentioned kind of briefly. The uh, analytical cubism, which was how cubism began, and analytical analytical cubism is. Is, you know, where, where when they first began, they really saw themselves as kind of like scientists who are trying to kind of do research into the way the eye works and all this kind of stuff. And then there were a bunch of artists that, and it, it took over really quickly. Like people saw those images and were like, whoa, there's something really cool here. And it spread like wildfire. And very quickly, a lot of artists started using that style, but without the sort of pseudo-scientific kind of approach, which is why we have then this other sort of term, synthetic cubism. So it's like it uses the style, the visual look of cubism, but none of the, the pseudo-scientific kind of approach. And there are some people, um, and, and you know, so you have like Picasso and Brock are the first real cubists. Um, and but both of them moved pretty quickly from the analytical cubism into just being like, you know what? We just really like this the way things look, and let's just <laughs> make paintings like that. So they kind of abandoned the, the some of the higher-minded ideals of of what cubism, some of the the original ideas behind the, that style. Because the, the the original idea of cubism is to be able to show many many views all at once, like the side of uh, like a box from a bunch of different sides all at once. 
and uh, which is I think a great idea but um, like we have here Jacob Lawrence is not really showing us the baseball player from 20 different views he's just using this kind of very angular style to um, to, to create his, his painting right So, you know, the, some of the early writers would 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 probably say something like, "Well, he's not a real cubist. He's just taking the kind of this the look, and he's repurposing it for his own thing." And so this is, looks kind of black, but I'm going to leave that. I'm going to put it like a darker gray underneath the sole of that shoe. I'll do that here too. Just like the look of it. <laughs> so you can see there's a lot of detail. It, it, I would not be surprised if many of you decided to kind of cut a few corners here and there and you know uh, not put all of this in here because it can takes a little bit of time. It also requires a little bit more um, finesse with, with your smaller brushes. And I know this is something that is more difficult to do and more time consuming. And it takes, it takes some practice to be able to use a very small paintbrush. So, if you're one of those people who finds that this is like unpleasant then by all means feel free to um, simplify which you know I don't, also don't think um, Jacob Lawrence would have too much of, of an issue with since a lot of his work involved this like hyper simplification of objects and people etc So again, I could wait until the very end to put these spikes on, but I kind of just wanted to, to play with that right now. And given the option, I always prefer to do as much. Like I, if I'm painting on my own, I'm not usually in a in a hurry, so I take my time. And if I have to paint over something two or three times, it doesn't bother me. But okay, what else do I want to do at this point? Right, I'm like looking around, thinking, okay, we've got all the shoes, any little details that need black. Can I remove this other figure from the side? I could put this on my baseball bat here. And the mitt, and then I'm gonna need one of those hat. Do I wanna do black in here? I'm going to be conscious of the fact that I'm going to probably come back and do work in this area anyway. But okay. Just be careful that I'm just going to roll my Unlike, I think, most artists, and probably most of you watching right now, I'm a, a sports fan, and I love, I, lo I really love going to sporting events. I also really love going to see live theater, and um, I, I, as I say to my wife all the time, I, I just love spectacles of any kind. I love uh, sporting events, Theatrical events. When I when I lived in New York, when I was going to art school there, I used to go to see Broadway shows all the time. Those 
getting the TKTS half price tickets in the morning. I'd go and get tickets and then I'd go to Metropolitan or the Museum of Modern Art and stick around there and draw all day. And then I would go to a baseball game. Never got to go to a hockey game. That's one of my dreams is to go to Madison Square Garden and watch a base or a hockey game there. One of these days. And since I can't travel there anyway, it's like, ah, you know, I'm not missing it out at all, so. Okay. Just doing one last little check, seeing what else needs to be done. The other thing, I don't mind, I see, again, some of the, the, uh, the canvas showing through this black. I don't mind that. Like, I kind of, I may even just leave it like that, just because it kind of works with the rest of the painting. I may, however, tighten up some of these edges around uh, these objects as I go, and I put other colors in there, but I don't mind, you know, some of that, that look. Okay. So, it, I need to have a little bit of tea while I contemplate my next move. I'd like to get this done in about an hour. So, I'm going to continue working on the foreground, and we'll see how far I get done here. I imagine if I spend another 20 minutes in here, I think I'll be pretty much done here, and then, then that will give me an idea of how long I can spend on my background. So, um... What color? Let's get some red on here. And we'll paint that in. And then maybe we'll do some of this green. Okay, so let's just I'm gonna clean my brushes off a little bit. Especially those smaller brushes need to be. Ace one seven is it a, maybe a bit rate or audio codec problem? Haha, <laughs> yeah. Trust me, it's like hours and hours of looking online, <laughs> trying to figure out some of the the, the issues, and um, I think it's also a bit of a problem with our internet, and it's also just a YouTube thing as well. So. You fix one thing and then another, like, little, it's like whack-a-mole. One problem is solved, another one pops up, and you're just always banging around trying to get things to work. Um, Deborah says, we're losing the video and it keeps freezing. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I, again, I suggest maybe pausing it, go to the bathroom, come back in a few minutes, and just let it, so it's, so at least YouTube is can broadcast the the best feed possible because of that extra couple seconds to okay so let's put some red I'm gonna use my warm red again I mixed up the order so usually my warm reds here but I've just moved my tabs right so I'm gonna use my warm red to paint some of this stuff here baseball bat little few little touches And I don't even, I don't think, I'm not even going to modify it. I am going to put a little bit of slow dry medium in here just to make it a little bit easier to paint. do this whole thing and then I can do a second layer of red because I see there's sort of a 
want just two reds in here, so one will be kind of with the paint showing through, and then later on I'll come back and do another layer over top. It's interesting. Right now, this feels a little bit like just paint by numbers, right? We're just kind of getting everything in place, and it's a little bit slow. And depending on your temperament, that's a good thing, or driving drives you nuts. It's what I like generally about painting is is how at least the way that I my own style of painting is that there's lots of different kinds of moments in the painting that there's times where everything is going really fast and then there's times where it goes nice and slow and you can I can be really kind of deliberate about things and then it speeds up again and Again, just sort of going over the painting. Where do I need the colors to be? More red. You can see I, there was a hat that I took out here. Just I didn't think I needed needed it in there. Or, I mean, it, it was nice, but there's just there's so much detail in here that I kind of just had to make some decisions as to omitting a few things that most people probably would never even notice were missing. Okay, now we're come up here into... to the mask. bit of red in between that finger. Interesting. Um, on the end of the baseball bat here. I find this is just such an interesting composition. Right? Like I... That there's... We don't even really see the baseball bat in his hands. Like... I, if I was to do it, I'd probably have that bat higher up or behind him or anything like that. It's going straight backwards, right? And there's, it's a very busy picture. But that's also very typical of cubism. A lot of cubist paintings have a lot of stuff going on. In, and so it's in that way, it's, it is like cubism in that there's... An all-overness. Everything is 
There's there's very little. Um, there's not. I would say much of a focus to this image. Like we might say, like some paintings have. Um, you know, one area where all of our attention goes. Like my instinct would be to make the baseball maybe bigger and all the other colors a little bit more subdued so that our eye just goes right to the baseball. But if, when I first look at this picture, it takes me a little bit of a time to figure out exactly what and where things are in here. You know, and, um, and I could see some people saying that that is a negative. I think he probably... He, he wants you to, to kind of stop and take a look and um, get lost a little bit. And if you don't look at it long enough and you, you just sort of give up and continue on your way, he's like, ah, oh, I don't care. You, I want the, I'm going to reward people who are going to stop and take a look. And those people will get kind of, will, will get it. rim of these hats you could change these colors to, to suit your for your favorite baseball team or you know, your children's baseball team or whatever you like I wanted to turn this into New York Yankees or Toronto Blue Jays or whatever you could add stripes or replace the, the red with blue etc Okay, so now just doing another quick little scan over the painting and seeing if there's anything that needs to be done at this stage. I got all the red out that I need. Okay, I think so. Let's wash this brush. Deborah says, Michael, the video's okay now. I just pause and wait a second and then start, just like you said. And it seems to work. So that's good Good to hear that uh, that actually works. <laughs> Sometimes I just, like, make some suggestions that have no bearing in reality. Okay. Looks good. Okay. So let's move forward now. I'm gonna let's mix a, uh, a a a gray, a dark gray for the umpire for his jacket. And is there any? I can also use that for a few other places, like on shoes and stripes here. Okay. So to do that, I'm just gonna take some of this white. I'm gonna move it to the side down here. And then I'm going to mix in some of the darker paint. Let's we'll see how dark that is or to, how light it is when we paint it here. So you mix a little bit of it up and then let's just see what how it reacts with everything else around it. Want it to be darker or not? I think I'm going to paint it like this. And I might go back over it with a darker color. I might keep it. I don't know. I, I, yeah, I, th I like how that works so far. So we'll see here. Put the same stripe on the socks. Thank you. 
like I mean this I love this kind of thing like this is a kind of the kind of painting that I enjoy doing it's slow and time-consuming and um, but but I find it really rewarding you know it takes a little bit of time for it to all kind of come together but I find when it does it's super satisfying seeing it all done I know this is might not be the case for everybody watching right now and that's why I try to do lots of different kinds so that hopefully you know at least a, a couple you know paintings a month there's something that, that um, works for for everyone here uh, maybe while I still have this same gray I could do a little bit of there's still a little bit of lines on this umpire's mask. Okay. Dark gray. Anywhere else needs a dark gray. <laughs> I feel like I'm a hawker going up and down the stand. Dark gray. Got a dark gray. Anybody want a dark gray? Dark gray. Two dollars. Dark gray. <laughs> bringing back painful memories of being a hawker. Okay. So. Hmm. I could use that gray for some of... You know what? There is a little bit of that in the, the these white here, but I think I'm going to wait till I've got more of this done because I think that applying some of that gray down here could help clean this up a little bit. So I'll wait a little bit longer for that step. on the ground down here. Okay. Now. So I think what I'll do now is I'm going to just give this a little blow dry because I was starting to kind of get a few things sticking to my fingers and
so you know one thing you may notice me doing as I'm blow drying is I'm rubbing my fingers over things both to see if things are, are wet but also if there's big ridges or bumps here I, I'm often kind of squishing or moving those things out of the way both to help it dry it's gonna go because sometimes you have like a bubble of paint and the paint inside is gonna take a while to dry and I don't want it to like pop like a zit or something like the surface might be nice and, and hardened but if I kind of lean on it or rub then it'll pop and the, the, the paint that's inside which is still wet kind of you know is drawn all over the painting so I don't want that and also um, I often find when I'm doing outlining I get those ridges and even though the paint will self level and, and go for any kind of bumps will get smaller as the water inside evaporates sometimes you're stuck with these kind of big sharp these peaks as as you as it's called and if you want those peaks to be there by all means but sometimes I don't want it can be a little distracting sometimes and sometimes they catch the light in a way that makes it let's say if you have an in the black area and you've got some ridges it might look like there's white in there and you're like what's going on you keep working on it and it's it's just because there's raised edges that are catching the light in certain ways and it can especially like on faces and things it can really change the way the face looks okay so I think what I want to do next is how dry is all this okay I think I'm gonna put mix of turquoise and we'll put that in the background uh, because we have these blues these cool blues in the background and I'm gonna get a bit of that in here I think that'll also really help the background a little bit and then I'm gonna put some of these greens into the bottom these weird shadows down there so that'll probably take us the next 15 20 minutes or so and then it, it, you'll see the painting really starts to kind of come together a little bit quicker from that point on okay so to make this turquoise actually let's put the, the painting back up here so you can see the color I'm gonna mix some of this um, cool blue with the cool yellow. And then we're just gonna mix it right in here with this white. Let's get some of this white out here. All right, if it's too green, I'm just going to add a little more blue in here. Okay. Pretty close, close enough. Okay. So, where am I going to put this? Uh, And I'm debating to myself to how much work do I want to put into this area like am I gonna outline and shadow and all that kind of stuff in here or am I just gonna put some of these colors back here and then move on um, and I'm not sure I'm not sure just yet so I think I'm, I'm just gonna put a bunch of color back here and then we'll just sort of see where we are time wise See, I'm painting in the, the dark and the light areas of this same color. So these shapes are, are bigger shapes than in the original. Also, it's important to remember that um, That Jacob Lawrence is putting these colors in certain places very deliberately 
Like, I don't... It's not like he's working from a photograph here and thinking, like, oh, I gotta make sure I get the... the person with the... the turquoise in behind... The, over the shoulder of the umpire. That's... He's... He's looking at it as, like, okay, what colors need to go where to... to, to pull off the painting as I want it to, to look. And... He obviously believed that this turquoise color worked well in the background um, to kind of balance out some of the other colors elsewhere because we don't see this color in the foreground anywhere we have a green in the foreground um, but not the same kind of turquoise so and he's used a lot of it right if you're looking in the in the background it's not like there's hundreds of different colors we really have this and maybe some yellows and reds are the only things back there. It is a nice color. Um, I, this is definitely one of my preferred colors. Is this disc teal? And I was a a fan of the San Jose Sharks hockey team when they appeared in the early 1990s, and they had a teal color scheme. was a very 90s thing like there was a lot of pastels in it in the early 90s in architecture and clothing okay so we got these let's um some more making some stuff up right here just out on the fly really stretch this picture out towards the edge So I guess it's time to start talking a little bit about our uh, Thursday Paint the News class. And what are we going to paint on Thursday? I haven't really been thinking about that yet. So I, um, obviously we have 
some ideas from the last few episodes we could we could carry some of those forward but if there's other things that people would like to paint and I know some really important things happening going on in the world uh, let me know put them in the chat okay so that that color works really nice in the background right it, it's a nice color but it, it it's cooler so it wants to recede right so that's that's obviously why he put it there he, he knew what he was doing he's he's a incredible painter um but you know there's lots of artists that don't use these rules and artists that know the rules but don't abide by them for various different reasons Now, let's um, let's work this. Uh, give that an opportunity for everything down here to dry. Like okay, so now let's paint the, these greens down here. And we'll, then that this will be dry up there, and we'll go back up and put some of those browns and oranges into the crowd. So what? How do we get these really nice greens? So, I suspect he's using some of the warm blue, a little bit of the cool yellow, and making it very transparent. So let's, we'll mix this up and we'll see what this looks like. So, I'm gonna take a bit of the warm blue here. And I'll take some cool yellow. Now the reason why I'm not using the blue, the cool blue, is that it's that's it's gonna be maybe a little bit electric. And also it's it's those would be two cold colors right in the foreground. And it might be just too much. Let's see how close this is. Not bad. Not bad. We can put a little bit of the cool blue in here. There we go. There, that looks a little bit closer. Okay. So we've got that color. Let's put a bunch of slow dry medium in here to. In fact, we could glaze this. I'm going to use slow dry medium instead of glaze. And I'm going to put even more in here. I want this to be kind of transparent. So the more of this I put in here, the more transparent it will get. So I got my color mixed up, and now let's start kind of brushing this around. So I'm going to apply this relatively thin. When I first put it on there, I put I had maybe too much on my brush. And so 
so I had to kind of like brush it around. see it all of a sudden starts giving a lot more um, depth to everything in the foreground here. color out. I'm not going to paint over the white with it because I'm afraid it might be a little bit electric on that white. Although we can see. Let's see. Let's just test it. Let's see if we, if we like these results. I guess it's okay. Let's do the same all the way over here. You know, I, again, I probably if I was to be painting this on my own off camera, I might have decided to do this like as w right a very early step in the painting and make this almost as part of my underpainting but I think it might have been a little confusing for people if we because you, you I think it's more it's helpful to see the these a little bit have a little bit more of the structure of the painting in place before we did this but I mean, as I'm working on this, I, I see why he added that other figure there. It does feel like there could be extra space there, but uh, I'm not too, too worried about it right now. Okay. 
getting a warning from Facebook about the video, so you may notice some stuttering. That's pretty good. Now, let's say about an hour left here. In the last 45 minutes. Curious if let me see if I just reload this if people have commented or not. Hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I I think there is some issues happening right now for people watching, so you're not alone. If you're having trouble. So, what do we want to do now? I think I wanted to tackle a little bit of this, more colors in the background. Put some red back there, and I'm going to uh, put a little bit of white, make it a gray. So, I'm going to add, I'm gonna mix another gray here. Got a little bit of black, so just mix up some black and white mix up a gray for ourselves this is, which I can use to add to the exist any of the existing colors let's use some slow dry medium just a little quick drop in there so now when I paint some red into the background it's going to recede a little bit more and also look a little bit less it'll be less intense i'm going to also use the cool the magenta the, just which is a cold color as well so that's also going to push things further back and yeah so let's take this cool red and we're going to use that in the background So where are we going to put this? Um, So it's a pretty, I've diluted it maybe a little bit. It's more, less intense than, than his for sure. He used, his colors might be a little bit brighter or reds back there. I don't really, he doesn't really have that color elsewhere. 
Um, so maybe I'm not going to use it too much. I think he's got, he has a lot more kind of black in there, which I'm going to use, but it's going to take a little bit of time. If I really want to do all of these details back there, it would take me some time, and I'm just a little bit concerned about that. So I'm gonna, I'm trying to like simplify things just a bit so that I don't have to worry about really getting too many of these little details in there. got an orange quality in going on there too so let's put I'm gonna put cold yellow and cold red together so I just took some cold yellow I'll just mix this over here you have like a very dull orange So I'm definitely taking some liberties right here with these colors that I'm adding into the background. And whether this works or not, it will be up for debate. This color again, this is warm or some cold yellow, cold red, and gray. And I added just a tiny bit of warm red in there as well. I don't mind if this the background's not really a, a, so important, so I don't mind if it's um, the colors are different and all that kind of stuff. Okay, um, 
That's good. I'll clean my brush here. Next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put a little bit of yellow onto baseball bats and stuff. So this is just the cool yellow right out of the tube. See, it barely shows up here, which I like. I don't want it to be too neon, otherwise it's going to stick out too much. Always clean that kind of stuff up later on. I'm gonna take this same yellow. Oops. I'm gonna put it in the glove here. It's barely visible. Got mixed up with a bit of other color, so I'll just. I'm also going to add the same cold yellow in a few other little places. Just like little kind of highlights here on the ground. Barely visible, but I, it, it does have a little bit of um, a brightening effect. And this is why, again, I, I might go back over some of the darker colors in a little bit. Like these blacks. Just subtle brightening. I might even need to go back over and do this again. If I was even, even in a bigger hurry, I could add a little bit of white into this cool yellow. And I might do that in a bit here. We'll see. Okay. Um, I'm going to mix an orange. I'm going to take some of this red. Warm red, warm yellow. I put this into the background. There's so much red on there, way too much red. Add a bit of white in here. Do I have any white left? Okay. I'm going to 
add this into a few places. Pretty subtle. going to let's see if I mix this color with this green it's going to get kind of brown and muddy I'm going to take that and put this on the hawker's bag Is it float? Is that what we called it? I can't remember what all these hawker terms were now. Okay. Well, that's good. So I think I'm now going to... Uh, uh, hmm direct most of the rest of my attention down here, focusing on the, the players and the browns and the blues, these uh, warm blues on his outfit. We'll just see if maybe I we'll have a little bit of... Where's my yellow? So just put a little bit of white into this cool yellow. Baseball bat there. Well, those really, really pops all of a sudden. That was that color, eh? Um, so maybe while I still got a little bit of that color, I'm just gonna bring that down to a few places, like around these the shoe. places that seem to be kind of like highlighted. I don't know if they really were in the original, but
Okay. Just the foot. I needed a little bit of, of something in those areas, and she brought back a bit. Nope. Not that color. Not that color at all. Okay. See, this kind of stuff I love doing. All this little nit knitting, nitpicking around in, in areas and fiddling. I think this is personally a lot of fun. I could see why it drives people, some other people, just nuts. But. Okay, so that feels good. Let's get some brown. So my, I actually forgot to clean a few brushes. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put on that blue uh, kind of shadow that's around on his body, on the main batter's body. Elsewhere. And then we'll put, we'll mix some brown. It'll go in a few different places. Oops. splashes of water on the canvas which is not bad but sometimes that water if it as it dries it can kind of leave like little it almost like kind of cleans the canvas a little bit and creates these little spots that look a little bit lighter so that's what I'm up to there okay so my palette is getting a little bit messy, but that's all right because things are dry. And I actually, I really like it when the palette gets a little bit muddy, especially when we're getting into the painting like this. That way it's, um, I don't, it looks less like colors right out of the tube, which always just sort of looks um, like a paint by numbers kind of thing. We want, when colors start getting a little bit dirty, then it just looks a little bit more complex. So, to make this uh, this blue, it's like a, it's going to be a white and and um, uh, warm blue. This is 
put some white down. And it's going to be like 95% white. I'm going to get my brush in there. Let's get some blue. And already it's it's changed a little bit. So if I was if I had a lot of time on my hands, I could do two or three or, or four or five kind of passes with this light color. Now I think I'm gonna I'll do one pass with a fairly light um, blue. And then we'll do one that will get a little bit darker here. So I just put a bit of slow dry medium in there. Okay. And I'm going to downgrade or upgrade to a much smaller brush, I guess, whichever way you want to think about it. And now let's kind of go around some of these edges. Now, this, you can see it's very subtle. And I can use this to almost kind of clean up some of my edges, too. I don't know if that's too subtle. I think it is a little bit too subtle. I'm going to add more blue in here. Just for the sake of time, I might not have time to do multiple passes of colors here. So I'm just going to, let's just go right to the darker blue and just... Uh, Now, he probably did this as like a glaze or very thin, transparent. I'm not kind of, obviously mine is, is a little bit different. Um, just because I'm also getting a little, I'm getting quite anxious with time and how much I need to do to, to get this painting closer to being done. So it's going to look a bit different. my my old suits there Shamza just joined the chat hi Shamza nice to see you again miss having your uh, super positive energy in the class I was really challenging people to experiment in my class of the past few weeks and that people were going to mutiny and I imagine you would have been a good stabilizing force in there <laughs> hmm. I mean this the way that I'm painting this makes me now feel like I gotta do white over top of this. You know, it's like um, maybe I should have glazed this. So sometimes you you think you're gonna do something that's gonna save you time, and then you end up it's ends up gonna take more time in the end. But I'm kind of committed at this point, so. 
I, I mean, I, I have some ideas of how I can make this work. So I'm not, it's not uh, the end of the world, but just, you know, it's different. Different than I was planning. Uh, Joshua G uh, Gilroy says, paint the news about Texans having their water and power back. <laughs> that is the craziest bit of news, eh? My goodness. Who would have thought not only would it snow in Texas, but they'd have such problems afterwards. Like, you can imagine it's snowing for a couple of hours and melting, and that would be kind of the beginning and end of that story, but... That this story, that story of people in Texas being without power for days and days on end, very few people would have foreseen that. Um, okay, I'm gonna use the same color in the socks. Okay. Okay, and this baseball player's got a lot of shadow on there. So, you know, some of the original pencil lines have kind of disappeared a little bit, so you have to either refer to the original image or kind of do a little bit of playing by ear a bit. Pretty good. Um, now, there are some areas where there's a slight different gray in here. So I'm going to mix that here. I think I'm just going to add a little bit more blue 
to the mixture. And add just a little bit of black in here, if I can steal a little bit of black from down here. Where's the black? So this is a bit more of like a, a gray black rather than kind of this baby blue that I've got there. And we can use this in a few, where can I put them? I'm gonna put this. I'm going to add it in a few different places that he didn't, just because of my time situation here. Okay, let's do this, a few little bits of the same thing over here. I'm starting to sweat in terms of my timeline. So, next I'm going to add brown. And we're going to add some brown into some of these faces and in stuff in the background, jerk jackets, etc. Shamza, you've got the energy from and freedom in your other classes. That's good. I remember you were you really wanted to be in my class, and it felt bad that we couldn't get you in there. So it makes me happy that you've you've got some other great teachers. Uh, that not that I'm a great teacher, but you've got other teachers that that are that are serving you well. So that's good. Uh, Shelley says, I was actually thinking, why don't we uh, paint? The painted turtle in light of all the turtles that they saved in Texas. There's some beautiful pictures of turtles underwater. Hmm. I, I, that's another thing I was not aware of. The turtles. The turtles. People saving the turtles. Love turtles. Okay. Okay, so to make a brown... I'm going to need some of my warm yellow. It's way too 
much. That's why I'm running low on it. I need warm yellow, blue, and so, sorry, warm yellow, warm blue, and warm red. All right, that's how we're going to mix that brown. So I'm going to take my warm yellow, add some warm red, and get an orange. I'm going to take some warm blue. I add that to there. It looks kind of green at first, and then it starts going more and more dark right now. Right now, very similar color, a little bit darker than the one we used to start the painting. To get it darker and darker, I'm going to add more and more blue in here. And if as you're doing this, it goes too green, you just add a little bit more red. So this is a, a good, I'm gonna use this color right now and I'm gonna darken it in a few mo minutes, but I'm gonna use this color in the background. For some of these faces and things. Did that <laughs> you put your hand down? You're like, oh, I just got some paint on my hand. Now, where did that come from? Now, of course, you know, this baseball game, take, if it took place, you know, or he attended it or whatever, remember at this time, black people were not allowed to play baseball with white people, right? which is, it just seems ridiculously outrageous to think of. But that was the reality. So there would also have been very few white people who would have gone to what was called the Negro Leagues back then. So the majority of the crowd, or if not all of the crowd, are going to be also African American people. Right, so these baseball players. I don't this looks like it's not a major league baseball game, not in nineteen forty four. What, five, I guess? What, what was painted in 1949, right? Jackie Robinson is 50s? Oh, 60s? 60s? Uh, no, I should, I should be right there. So I'm just going to make paint all these, these brown shapes here. I can add hats and stuff like that in a moment. Hair and okay, I'm going to put the same color. His face. I think I might have to um, have to go darker.
is all dark there. Hmm. What's that black? Okay, let's knit. Let's start darkening this in. Also gonna, there's a little bit of brown here in the ground, so which I think is is helpful to add a little bit of extra because some of these this area down here is a little bit in my painting a little bit blank, right? And I want to just give a little more complexity to some of these areas here. left a little bit of a halo around here, so let's back that off. I feel like that, all these, that little bit, these extra little layers just give some of these areas just something extra. Super, super subtle, but. Okay, that's good, that's good. I want darker browns now. Darker browns. Right, oh, I want this brown that's in here.
So I posted some the 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 next few videos that are coming up down the pipeline for the master class next week. We have Bill Trailer, who was a as is, is called a outsider artist and one of the the, the best, one of the most famous artists. Uh, outsider artist usually means like non, not formally educated. Uh, folk artist, I guess, is another word people will use. To, anyway, he's a fantastic artist, and we're going to look at him next class. The week after, we're going to be looking at Giorgio O'Keefe. super famous artist I mean arguably probably the most famous female artist of all time if you want to classify artists by their gender um, and then the week after that we're gonna do probably the most famous painting in all of human history the Mona Lisa by Leonardo da Vinci so that takes us into mid-march Plenty to keep people on their toes. <laughs> Mona Lisa will, is definitely a little more of a difficult painting, but we will do it. We'll get through it together. Okay, so now let's do a darker brown. So I'm just going to now take some more of the blue and mix it into here. Some more red and mix it in here. Yellow and make sure it stays in the brown family. Otherwise, it'll go purple on us. Now, um, to make it, oh, actually, no, let's put a little more uh, warm blue in there. That's nice and gets darker, darker. Now, to make it go even darker, let's take some cool blue. So, we're going to mix the blues in here. Now, it might look very blue when you're first mixing it, but it's not going to be blue when we paint it, especially compared to other, especially compared to any blue. Right? You might think, ah, it's way too blue, but you know, as soon as we start painting with it, you know, there's virtually nothing blue about it at all. So, let me see. I'm going to take this and put it into a few places just to get warmed up before I go right to the face. Actually, I'm going to put some slow dry medium and mix that in there. Paint tends to, you know, after we're, we've had paint on our palette for about two and a half hours, once it gets around that time, it starts to get a little bit chunky.
glove. And this guy's face here. Okay. Um, I'm going to take the same dark color, but I'm giving it a little bit of white, and I'm going to put it in the background as well, and just a few bunch of different places. We're getting kind of abstract back there, which I don't mind. He, he's got some really cool patterns and things in there. I'm not sure how much of that I'll be able to get done. Okay. So I'm debating. I might go back over this player with some white over top of it and and just be okay with some of this other stuff the other uniforms so that this guy really pops okay and, and now I'm gonna take just a bit of black and paint this dark 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 brown few places like the catcher Not as good as he did, <laughs> obviously. Uh, not bad, but just he he did a great job. I did a average job there, but um, that's why we're making paintings of these masters, right? So that we can all learn.
I do. I am gonna outline a little bit on him. Maybe I'm gonna make a, a very dark gray now that I can use to to do a little bit of detailing in the background. I just feel like I need to do a little bit more work back there. It's gonna take me longer, but ah, I can't. Uh, I won't be able to live with myself if I don't. Do the painting the way I, I want it. So, Get this dark brown. Clean these brushes real quick. Let's get a bit of slow dry medium on there. Or sorry, uh, just gray, dark gray. And this little fine brush that I've been using is definitely t on its kind of end of its life cycle kind of thing. Oops, that's wet. I'm gonna have to blow dry this. After, you know, however many paintings we've done, the fact that it's lasted that long is great, but uh, it's starting to cause me some trouble. So this, what I'm doing here doesn't have to be super understandable or um, it's just adding a little bit more complexity into some of these areas so they don't just look totally flat and so I'm kind of like putting little shadows on mostly the white clothing and things that are in the background here.
wants to take this color and put it over some of the turquoise. It's kind of a nice, it works well as a you know, gray on pretty much everything. Just that, that's great, just helps. Just. Give a little more character to the background. And also in a way, makes the background less distracting. You'd think it would be the opposite, but because, you know, if, if the background is, is really super simple and this is really complex, then sometimes I can draw our attention to it and we just want it to be in the background. And obviously if people are interested, they can look at it a little bit closer, but places so it's not as bright as this gray that's down on the feet or, or the catcher's area here. Okay, I'm going to make it add some brown to the same color. So not much rhyme or reason for what I'm doing right now. I'm just 
kind of imagine there's like shadows and Let's darken this down even more. Get some darker colors into this background. Let's move it a little bit too dark. I don't want it to be as as dark as the foreground imagery. Although he's pretty close to that in his painting. So some of this is, yeah, it's going to look a little bit nonsensical um, comparatively, but you know, I don't think the background is what people are most interested to remember about this painting. Okay. Getting getting closer to finishing that. I just want to add some white to this baseball cap. Okay, so let's. I'm going to put white back onto his body. I feel it needs it. So. In a, to do this, I don't need to do do it perfectly. It's not that I want it to be completely opaque. I just want it to look a little bit cleaner than it did. And that this is helping immensely right now, as far as I'm concerned, anyway. And it kind of really brings his body back into the foreground. Especially because I want to outline this with a little bit of blue. OK, 
Okay, so I'm just mixing a bit of a gray to get some of these shapes down here. Like, this looks like a very cubist thing down here. We have home plate, and I'm not sure exactly what he was thinking down here, but this looks like he was... Like these are some hallmarks of a, of a more... That's the uh, analytical cubism. Like, there's a couple of home plates happening here, multiple views of it. everybody doing out there ah uh, yes Deborah don't forget to add the stitching to the ball thank you uh, Deborah says and uh, it's still the year of the ox we're still in February is is uh, do we have all year to do the year of the ox <laughs> Or does it have to be done in February? I don't. I don't know enough about uh, the Chinese zodiac to. Okay. I'm just gonna. Do a little work here on the mitt. Um, anything else? That might have been a little dark on this face. It's. Do the stitching here.
So sorry, I lost uh, my voice. Dropped out there for a few minutes. My apologies. Um, let me just see. These don't have any memory cards in them. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll just keep on painting. Oh, my. Yeah. So. I do want. Let's see. I wonder if I can put. See if this works and see if it destroys everything.
Ah, man, that's driving me crazy. The audio is being weird like that. Hmm. Okay, so uh, let's do the, the blue outlining here. I'm going to use uh, warm blue, and I'm going to use that to kind of go around the figure here. So I'm going to get a little bit of slow dry medium with the blue, mix that up. I think this is a smart idea of uh, Jacob Lawrence to use blue to outline rather than the uh, black. I think it's going to help create a separation and pull it forward. So just as a little test, we can just do a little bit in some of these other areas of the painting. So I can get my feet wet with this color. I'm feeling confident about that. You don't have to do these lines very dark either. I'm doing them pretty lightly. Just barely a hint of them. In some places, anyway. As I do a wider line. <laughs>
this little bit of blue just even even when it's against the black background it just helps to kind of separate and elevate this figure gives it so much more definition and I know that he didn't use it everywhere in here and I may be using it in a few places he didn't but he you know um, probably worked on his painting for weeks and we're on like three hours and so uh, so I'm going to use whatever techniques I can here to, to resolve the painting. blow dry that So he was pretty subtle right here. I made my line much darker because I wasn't confident with the way that he, if he was being separated enough from that busy crowd in the background. So I've added this outline that uh, isn't there in the original. So we're going to do the same with his hat. How do I feel about the oh, I want to do a little bit of touching up with some white in there on the in these masks and I think I'm done. Was there any glaring other th anything else I needed to do? Thank you, Deborah, for sticking around for so long and painting along with me. <laughs> uh, okay. So, um, a little bit of white, and then I'm done. Even though I could work on this for a while longer, but duty calls. So, let's... Um, 
some outlining in these masks. This is also why artists tend to work on larger canvases because doing all these little detailing stuff on small canvases is tough work. Touch some of that up with a little bit of black. Yeah, just paint this stitching again. I want to make the baseball more white. Pops even more. This is a, this is much trickier than I thought. It serves me right for picking this painting. <laughs> there are more simpler ones that we could have done, but I really like this painting too. So, okay. Do the stitching on the ball, and then we're t well, actually a little bit of touching up on the masks, but then we're done. So I painted it white outline. Let's now just come back in, clean that up a bit. Ever so slightly.
wasn't dry, darn it. Okay. Patience. So, anything else I want to do on here? I think that's pretty good. I mean, I can continue fiddling with this forever. Um, I do want to just touch up this baseball. Careful. is probably the center of the whole picture so having the baseball being done as well as I can is probably a smart move okay Might give it just a let's just see. This might be a bad idea, but what if I put a little bit of white so I it looks a little cartoony. But I, I kind of like it. It's I, it's not the way that in the obviously in the original. <laughs> He's got this eye that's kind of looking at that baseball. I think it's because I'm losing my mind a little bit. I've been painting for three and a half hours, and it's like. I think that's okay. It's you have my permission to do something silly like that too. I, it's also like, if you've ever played baseball and you miss the ball, it's like ah. So he's staring at that ball that he just missed. <laughs> okay. Let's uh let's put the final signature on here. Get my pen. And if I recall my own name now. Okay. <laughs> 
Great. Okay. So, uh, make sure. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for sticking around with me to when we finished off this painting. I'm, I'm actually really happy with the way it turned out. Probably took me about an extra hour longer than I was planning. But, you know, sometimes good things take a little bit extra time to, to make, right? So, if you've enjoyed today's episode, please like and subscribe to the channel. There's a notification bell there you hit. That way you know when the next videos are coming up. And uh, you can hit the reminders for those. If you want to make a donation via PayPal, there's a link below as well. You can click on that. Or if you want to contact me to send me an e-transfer or check, uh, my email can be found on my website, which is down below. I don't put it here because otherwise I get spammed like nuts. But if you want to find me, you can. And, um, yeah, there's some great suggestions on there for our Thursday episode. So I'll post something on the Facebook group to for some people that maybe haven't watched this episode yet. And I uh, look forward to hearing and seeing. I have no idea what we're going to do. Maybe it's going to be a turtle. I don't know. I, I, I have to do a little investigating to the turtles in Texas now. So thank you, everybody, for tuning in, watching once more. And uh, I don't have any outgoing graphics anymore. So um, I'll just zoom in on the painting. And that's how we'll end today's episode. So I think that looks pretty darn good. Zoom out and zoom in. Okay, everybody, have yourselves a wonderful rest of your night, and we shall see you again on Thursday.